if you have not done so already, make sure you share uh, your emoji with my email so that it can be graded. For the most of you, I've given back uh, the grade on Google Classroom. It won't be into Infinite Campus for a, a little bit longer, um, but you can see what your grade is. And if ever you want improvements on your grade, um, just let me know. One thing I just want to remind everyone of as well, when you're making art, um, I want you to have freedom of expression. Just make sure it is school appropriate, no weapons, um, nothing violent, nothing uh, inappropriate. So the project this week is going to get a little bit more challenging. I'm going to enter to the entire, introduce you to the entire long, year-long topic of this class. Um, it is discovery in the studio arts, but we're discovering one thing in particular. And then the new project will start today. You're going to need a drawing or a sketchbook or a plain white piece of printer paper. And you're going to also need a pencil or an eraser and an eraser. If you do not have one of these, um, you really need to let me know um, either in chat or through email so that we can uh, get you to be able to do this project. All right. So our year long topic is ancient art history. Um, so all year long, we're going to be using this topic as kind of our bouncing point. Um, and ancient art is anything from the beginning of time. So before writing ever happened, the first humans that we have art of um, or from, and then everything later into like the 1700s. Uh, so all ancient art has impacted everything in the future. Um, so everyone always asks, why is this important? Why do I need to learn this? Um, it gives you a lot of insight. Um, and, and if you really do take the time to learn about ancient art, uh, you can learn about others and about values um, and just be inspired by it. Um, it also impacts the art that we make. So let's say we just made ancient art. We didn't know anything about ancient art. Um, and we thought we had the most brilliant idea that it had never been created before. But because we never did the research to know that someone had already done it, now um, our art uh, is just repeating itself. We'll get a little bit more into that, but basically, as long as you can learn about ancient art history, you can really make more interesting artwork. Okay, so the uh, idea or question I want you to ask yourself for every single project um, is how can I use the ideas and processes of ancient art to make my own contemporary art? We're going to start by looking at this. Um, with the oldest known art form. Um, for every project, you guys are going to be able to make what you love um, about the thing, art about the things you love. It's just going to be inspired from the past. Um, so starting with the oldest of all art forms, Paleolithic art. Um, it, Paleolithic means old stone age. Old stone age, you can guess what it, the art is about and who made it, uh, the caves. So it's cave art. Um, and the caves in France and Spain are where we found these pieces of artwork. They're the best known examples of prehistoric painting and drawing. What I mean by prehistory is there's no written language from these people. All we know is the images. Um, there has no, been no record of writing. There could have been writing. Um, maybe they just had a spoken language. We don't know because the only evidence we have of this culture and of these people are their drawings and a couple other sculptural artworks. For this week, we're just looking at their cave paintings. Um, so who made them and how? Cavemen made them. Um, the image on the left is typically what we think of as cavemen. Um, these people that are going around a fire thinking, oh, ooh, fire, ah, and that's all they do. No, but we, we have more reason to believe they're a lot more complex humans um, than we make them out to be. Um, well, first of all, they would have had to have the knowledge. Caves are very dark. They would have had to know how to create a light that could be uh, used and lasting over a long period of time to go into these caves and make art. Um, so they had to know how to maybe take a cow, use the fat from a cow to burn that, and, and have it in the cave for an extended period of time. But also, they don't have the resources to just go to a store and find paint and paintbrushes. They were the first people to do this, to paint. Um, so imagine they're using a lot of their time to research, what can I use to paint with to leave this kind of drawing, this relic, this thing behind. Um, so they had to play with all sorts of stones and dirt and earth to find these paints. 
but then they also had to make their own paintbrushes. So they were the first people that invented the things that we use so commonly today, um, which makes us believe that they're a lot more complex than we, we make them out to be in the movies. Um, so these people seemed to draw and make art about what was very important to them. Why else would they send these people into the cave for hours while everyone else was probably out hunting and just surviving? Why would they take the time to have these guys paint? Uh, it had to be very important to them. Okay, um, so what do you see? There are paintings of animals, of humans. So you can also guess that this is like their source of life. This is the most important thing to them. Um, we often talk about and and just post in social media the things that matter to us it's the same thing this started in ancient ancient history before a written language was ever created these human beings were painting about the things that mattered most to them the oxen the horse the bison these things that they paint were probably their source of light heat when they um, wanted to start a fire they were their source of food, they were their source of clothing, but then the only reason they kept or way they kept each other alive was by reproducing. So even humans are very important to them and the men who went out and even women who went out probably and, and fought to get these animals. Uh, so we have a little bit of insight into their life just from their images, no written language possible. Um, think about this, what is your source of life? What is the most important thing to you? Obviously, we need food and we need water and we need animals to be able to eat unless you're vegan or vegetarian. Um, but what else is important to you? Like, is your phone super important to you? Is your technology? I know that technology is super important to us teachers right now so that we can talk to you guys. Um, and how does it look different from the Paleolithic time period? Like we can see how the, the old Paleolithic time connects to right now um, and how the same things have been repeated. Something I see a connection in is tattoo art. Um, so starting in Paleolithic times, Paleolithic people were making visual examples on the cave walls of what was most important to us. It's just like tattoos. People are taking the symbols of things that are very important to them and they're putting them on their bodies so that they're permanent so you can share what is most important to you with the rest of the world. And they're using symbols, a simple object with other objects inside. It tells a story, it communicates an idea. Um, and so does this one right here with the basketball. Um, it's the symbol of this like medical life. I don't even know what it's called, but there's a basketball in the center. So you can get the idea just from these symbols that it's basketball that gives these people life, that they live for basketball. Um, and hopefully some of you guys can relate to these things. Um, for our first project, we're gonna be taking this inspiration, um, making our own design, whether you call it a tattoo design or a regular design, uh, that's up to you. Uh, I'm not forcing you to create a tattoo design. I'm not telling you to go get tattoo de designs on your body. Um, but the idea of taking images, visual symbols, and sharing things that are important to you is what are like, jump off point is for this first project. Um, so what we're gonna do here, so a simple example, I'll have more for you uh, made out by the end of today. Um, and then complex examples here, what you're gonna do for this project, and today we're gonna start off really simple, picking our object and sketching out the outline. Um, you're going to pick an object, any object that has some sort of meaning or importance to you, um, it doesn't necessarily have to bring you life, but just something that interests you. Um, you're going to outline, or, or in a 7x7 seven seven inch square, you're going to create an outline of this object that you've chosen. Um, then through the rest of the week, you're going to brainstorm all the different symbols that relate to this object. Um, so let's say the globe is the object that you chose here. Um, then what you're trying to express is the idea of traveling, that you love traveling. So you're gonna find a bunch of symbols that represent traveling or the globe. Um, so right here, there's a plane, traveling, there's a suitcase. What else could I put in here? Probably, let's do something like a, someone else wanna share? A map. A map, yeah, so I could put a map in here. What else, guys?
like monuments, like basically the Statue of Liberty. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like anywhere from around the world, you could do foods if you're like a crazy foodie and you just love trying other cultures' foods. Um, these are symbols of this one idea. Um, so hopefully you guys are getting this. Let's say we wanted to do the outline of a, uh, a car. Then inside of the car, you could do uh, car logos, you could do different brands. Let's say you pick the Subaru, which is super like adventurous. Um, you could do anything adventure that you would do in that Subaru. You pick the Lamborghini, you could do racing symbols. Um, you could do anything with this. Okay, so what I'm requiring at the most basic today is just picking your outline of the object, drawing a seven by seven inch square really, really well, um, and then drawing the outline, cleaning it up, making it look really nice. You'll want to start by drawing it lightly. Um, you don't have to draw any objects. We'll do that the rest of the day or the rest of the week. But if you wanted to do go super complex, so my super, super creative people, um, you have a crazy idea and you want to do an object and you want to open the object up or you even want to make like a scene inside of your object. Um, I'm going to have a couple, like maybe six to eight objects required inside, symbols in, inside of your object. Um, but if you wanted to get creative with how the arrangement is, so instead of doing a, a straight outline, you opened it up and you had the objects like flying out of it or a scene inside of it, you could do that too. Uh, I'm not going to ever keep you from going extra creative. Um, but I want you guys to know this can be complex. This can be a confusing idea to, to think in symbols. So if you're having a hard time understanding it, um, definitely stay on ask, I can re-explain. If you have an idea and you're not sure exactly how to do it or if it's the best idea, jump on, let me know, show me a picture of what you're thinking, um, communicate in some sort of way. Uh, know I am here as your resource. I want you guys to enjoy this project and if you're confused, I'm here for you. Okay, um, so really quick, for my people who like things to be in writing, um, today, Using a pencil, draw a perfect seven by seven inch square. If you don't have a ruler, um, you can estimate the size. Um, in your sketchbook or on a plain white piece of paper, that's where you would wanna do it. You wanna choose an object to draw an outline of. Draw the outline of the object neatly, but you wanna also fill the whole square. You don't want like all this empty space to be around it. Um, there is like a, a Google Doc tutorial on Google Classroom. Um, with an example on there too, one of the images I showed. You don't have to submit it at the end of the day.